Thank you, Max. Beautiful. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome on this Sunday worship service. We are glad you are here, whether you're in person or worshiping online. I hope all of you will take a moment. Um, there's a digital link. There's a link on your digital bulletin that lets us know you're here. You can fill out that information. If it's one of your first Sundays here, we hope that you'll um, let us know so that re we can reach out to you with a further word of welcome. We do have some visitors today, so look around. If there's faces that you haven't seen before or maybe haven't seen in a while, make sure we welcome and greet one another. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Let us join our hearts as we worship together. Each person is a beloved child of God. St. Francis United Methodist Church welcomes, affirms, and invites everyone into the full life and ministry of our congregation, regardless of race, culture, ethnicity, age, sexual orientation, gender identity, family or socioeconomic status, physical or mental ability, or faith history. Join us as we gather as one community, grow our faith, give of our diverse gifts, and go into the world to advance the kingdom of God. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. God of all that is seen and unseen, we come together by faith, assured you are determined to be our God and that you are steadfast in your commitment to have us as disciples of Jesus Christ. In the face of doubts and misgivings, enable us to keep trusting you and to keep leaning forward to see your kingdom come, your will being done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And let us now stand as we are able and join in song.
please join me in the prayer for illumination. God of hope, by faith we know that you created the world and that what is seen is made by things that are not visible. Open our hearts that we may hear your word with clarity and assuredness of hope as we follow you in all righteousness. Amen. The first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1 and 10 through 20. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amoz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, said the Lord. I have ha had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed breath beasts, I do not delight in the blood of bulls or the lambs of gods, of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Bringing offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation. I cannot ensure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove your evil deeds, and before my eyes, cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. If your sins are like scarlet, will they become like snow? If they are red like crimson, will they become like wool? If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The second reading comes from Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 16. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called out to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, with Sarah's involvement, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, as this one as good as deed, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All these died in faith, without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better homeland, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Gospel train is coming, gospel train is coming, gospel train is coming, and we'll get on board. Gospel train is coming, gospel train is coming, gospel train is coming, and we'll get on board. We'll get 
get on board, we'll get on board. Gospel train is coming and we'll get on board. Freedom is awaiting, freedom is awaiting, freedom is awaiting in the promised land. Freedom is awaiting, freedom is awaiting, freedom is awaiting in the promised land. The promised land, the promised land. Get on board, we'll get on board, get on board, we'll get on board, 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 just we'll board that train, and we'll ride, ride, ride to the promised land. Yonder lies a devil, yonder lies a devil, yonder lies a devil, and he's watching you. Yonder lies a devil, yonder lies a devil, yonder lies a devil, and he's watching you. He's watching you, he's watching you. Yonder lies a devil, and he's watching you. We'll get on board, get on board. We'll get on board, get on board. We'll get on board, board, board. Yes, we'll board that train. We'll ride, ride, ride to the promised land. We'll get on board, get on board. We'll get on board, get on board. We'll get on board, board, board. Yes, we'll board that train. And we'll ride to the promised Amen. Thank you. At this point, I ask those of you who are able to stand on your feet, stand in your hearts as we hear the gospel from Luke chapter 12, verses 32 through 40. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action. Have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You must also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Do not be afraid, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Don't you love that? The kingdom is a gift that God is pleased to give us. Jesus goes on to invite us to be part of all that God is doing, to join God's work, to trust God. Not things, money, possessions for the future, to trust that all will be well. Basically, to have faith, even when faced with the fearful things of this world. It's important to remember that scripture never says there's nothing to be afraid of, never denies that there are scary things in this world. But scripture does encourage us to let faith trump our fear. Now, when I had to ser turn in a sermon title earlier than usual, I was preaching on fear, which I think is a lot easier to talk about than faith. 
at least it is for me, because I think I remember, well, I can't forget this woman who came to my office crying angry tears of pain and frustration. She had just been to see her pastor, laid out her heart to this person, and was told, you just need to keep the faith. Just keep the faith. And when she pushed back, just keep the faith. Just keep the faith. Repeatedly, as if it was all on her. She left that pastor's office feeling worse than when she arrived. It was years ago, but her pain still sets off warning bells in my head to carefully, thoughtfully consider faith, to not trivialize faith, to not reduce faith to a self-help slogan or a trite pep talk, most especially when life is hard, even frightening which is why I wanted to avoid a sermon on faith. But this week I couldn't, because I think a deeper understanding of faith matters way too much, especially now, when studies over and over show that faith in the church and in God is declining. And we get it. Faith was declining in God even before COVID, before the racial reckonings in the wake of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, before January 6th, before Ukraine, before all the fires and floods and droughts that we've experienced this year. And it hasn't helped that Christians have acted and spoken and voted in ways that seem contrary to God's values of mercy and justice, contrary to the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ. Given all the uncertainty, unrest, unease with the way things are today, faith matters, specifically faith in God, who is really the only one in whom we should place our ultimate faith. But what does that mean, to have faith in God? Hebrews 11.1 1 defines faith in this way. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. It's a beautiful verse. Even more, I love what comes after it. A list of the early inductees into the Faith Hall of Fame. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Moses, David, the prophets. And I really love how the writer of Hebrews goes on to say that all of those people, along with so many others throughout history, the imperfect saints, are still a part of that great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us, encouraging us to continue following Christ, to run the race that is set before us, to persevere in a life of faith, whatever the challenges. All that is beautifully, poetically inspiring. But would it have been practical enough for that woman weeping in my office? What else might speak to her, to us, to help us get through this day, that chaos, this crisis, whatever challenge. Struggling to answer that this week, I discovered three things that gave me new insights into understanding faith, especially when there seems to be so much angst, so much to fear. So I'll share these three with you. The first was Eugene Peterson's translation in the message of that same verse, Hebrews 11.1. 1. His translation goes like this. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. Faith, a firm foundation on which we can stand in the midst of the chaos that is life, both the good and the awful. And even though we can't see God's future promises realized yet, God's holy desire for all people is our hope, the foundation that makes life worth living. 
that keeps us pressing forward, following Christ in the best of times and the worst. That was the first thing. The second was a twist on the Stockdale paradox, which was first written about in the business book, Good to Great. Admiral Jim Stockdale was a prisoner of war in Vietnam. When asked how he survived such a horrible experience, while others younger and more fit did not, he replied that it wasn't the total optimist or the total pessimist that survived, but the ones who were realistic about their present challenges while still holding on to the long view that in the end, they would prevail, no matter what. Blogger and pastor Bruce Maples applied this Stockdale principles to Stock, Stockdale paradox to Hebrews 11 and to faith. The hall of famers in Hebrews 11 weren't perfect. The paths they followed were far from easy. But they never let go of the long view that God would prevail. They held fast to the belief that God was with them, that God held the future, and that belief informed their choices and their actions, enabling them to keep going forward in spite of tremendous challenges without knowing exactly where they would end up. And then the third thing, a painting by Belgian surrealist Rene Magritte. You have to picture this painting. He paints himself sitting in front of a canvas. To his left is a table. On that table sits the, sits the inspiration for his painting, for what he's putting on the canvas in front of him. So on this table is just an egg, just a plain, simple egg. And yet on the canvas, at the tip of his paintbrush is a magnificent, detailed depiction of a bird flying. The unseen made visible. The promise realized. So what is faith? Faith is seeing the egg and trusting the creator of all that is enough to paint the unseen, glorious creation. Faith is seeing the world as it really is, and still intentionally and courageously acting to move the world forward towards God's promised reality, with our time, with our money, with our voices, with our votes, with our prayers, with our treatment of God's creation, with our hospitality to the other, with all the love we can muster. Faith is to keep going, despite our fear, one step at a time, knowing that life is worth living because God is with us, God holds the future, and God will prevail in turning the world to God's way of justice and mercy where all people can flourish. I don't remember what I said to the woman who came to my office so hurt by another pastor. I know I didn't say just keep the faith piling on to this pain. But also because reducing faith to a self-help slogan puts it all on her. But the good news about faith is that it's God. It is God who through Jesus Christ gives us the grace to let our faith overcome our fear. And it is God who through the Holy Spirit and that great cloud of witnesses goes with us each and every step as we lean into God's future, God's vision of a just world, a vision that we can be assured will prevail no matter what. Ultimately, faith is not what or how or us. 
Faith is who. In whom do we place our ultimate trust? This day and always, may we trust God who works within us and for us and is able to accomplish abundantly more than we could ever ask or imagine. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In response to God's word read and proclaimed this morning, we join our hearts together in prayer for each petition. When you hear, O God of hope, your response will be increase our faith. Let us pray. O God, your blessings are as plentiful as the stars above, as numerous as the grains of sand along the seashore. We come before you with grateful hearts as we pray for the church and the world saying, O God of hope, increase our faith. We pray for wisdom and guidance for all people and leaders of this world, that they may foster peace and justice and serve the common good. O God of hope, increase our faith. We pray for your church, that by your grace and our faith, we may serve you with constancy and love. O God of hope, Increase our faith. We pray for those who are sick or suffer any need, that they would know your healing strength and find comfort through our faithful care. O oh God of hope, increase our faith. O oh God, help us to protect the goodness of your creation, that all may enjoy the precious blessings of this world as a foretaste of the next. O oh God of hope, Increase our faith. We pray for all those dealing with impacts of natural disasters throughout the world, and especially right now for all those who are dealing with impacts of flooding in Kentucky. Might all those in need be met with aid and compassion. O oh God of hope, increase our faith. We remember those who have died, the saints in heaven, who know fully now the treasure that cannot be destroyed, the feast and peace that continues without end. O oh God of hope, increase our faith. Increase our faith and amplify our hope that by the power of your spirit we might serve you well now and forever. And together all of God's people say, Amen. Christ our Lord invites to this table of grace all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. So together, as the people of God, let us confess our sin together before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray and free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. In the midst of sin, in the midst of those things done and left undone, the grace and love of God intercedes and meets us here and now in every place in our life. In the name of Jesus Christ, together we are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Amen. And as a forgiven people, we give of our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings back to a generous God. And especially right now, we give to all that's going on in Kentucky. You can give directly to Kentucky Aid through Connects, uh, our giving and communications platform. And Pastor Ann and I are still looking for folks that might be interested in assembling flood buckets or hygiene kits. So if you are feeling called to do so, please let us know. And at this time, you are invited to stand and share signs of Christ's peace with one another this morning.
And you're invited to remain standing as we join and sing and pray together the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image. You breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and towns the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water in the spirit. On the night which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said to each of them, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said to each of them, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God now and forever. And now as children of God, let us pray together as Christ is teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom and power. Because there is one loaf, though we are many, the spread that we break is our sharing together in the body of Christ. 
And this cup over which we give thanks, the cups that you all hold as well as our sharing together in the blood of Christ. At this time, you are invited to be seated and to partake in this holy meal. Let us pray after receiving this holy meal. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Right this time to stand as you are able and sing together.
faith. It's trust. For us, it is trust in the one who continually says to us, do not be afraid, for I am with you. It is trust in the one who says, it is my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Let us go forth with such faith in our hearts that others can see in our lives the love of God. And as we go this day, know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the power of the Holy Spirit goes with us. Amen. To learn more about the mission and ministries of St. Francis United Methodist Church, please visit our church website and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.